What's going on guys, welcome to the video. So it seems the Brexit party MEPs are already calling out the massive waste and bureaucracy of the EU superstate. Only days after rightly turning their backs on the EU lullaby. They have since discovered that the EU have butlers to serve the MPs, a fleet of limos to get them around, and wastes countless amounts of money on moving documents between two buildings each month. We will check out this article, but first let's play this clip showing the first impressions of the Brexit Party MEPs. I come to represent uh, the very clear view of the British people, which is that we should not be here. Uh, we will behave ourselves unless we hear our country being introduced or Brexit voters being introduced. And if that happens in the chamber, believe me, they'll know we're here. But it really feels like a vast bureaucracy. There is no buzz as there is in the House of Commons, of independent-minded people standing up for the people who voted for them. Just somehow is lacking. I can't put my finger on it, but it isn't here. It's, it's all a process, and it's a process to be organised well. But it's not about the electors. The two uh, uh, most prevalent impressions uh, are, A, just the huge waste and B, the sort of the, just the lack of democracy. And let me give you an example of both. So you have this fantastic building. I mean, it's really a spectacular building and uh, offices and chamber and so on. And it's basically used for three and a half days a month. And that is it. Um, every month, they have to transfer all the documents, 6,000 people across from Brussels to Strasbourg just because they have the second parliament and then after the three and a half minutes they were transfer it all back again. It cost them two hundred million euros to travel you know, travel back to the world and transfer all these all these boxes of files and documents and so on every single month. So it's just totally, totally, you know, wasteful. The whole place is full of flunkies who are sort of butlers really for the MEP effectively and the whole welcome thing. It's very smoothly operated of course because the European Union want to actually uh, attract member states representatives to continue to support the, the entire uh, the entire edifice of this this uh, increasing dictatorship. Um, so you know, it's all very smoothly operated from that point of view. Uh, having said that, the the Merc limos didn't turn up for a few of our new pieces this morning. I didn't book one because I'm not really very keen on it. But there's a fleet in Brussels of 160 Mercedes-Benz. I'm not sure how many there are in Strasbourg, but it's probably the equivalent number. Of course, it's this butler service that they have, you know, with the, the, book, the booking service, and you have to book first class and all the rest of it, and the, um, you know, classic gravy train stuff, and uh, the limo service, and uh, if you're actually in the coffee shop, I was queuing up with a long queue of people, and actually from enough lamps to stroke to the the side of the uh, the bar and started, oh, that's uh, call that typical of one to push it. And he said, no, no, John, you've not noticed. There's a sign here, MEPs go to the front of the queue. MEPs who are here, who support uh, a closer and more federal Europe, do not like anyone who criticises it or anyone who thinks that sovereignty of the nation state is more important than their pet European integration of policy. They're never going to warm to us, but it's certainly a very civil and, and amiable kind of um, conversations we've had. But there's been certainly no animosity at all. The organisation is even more standing and startling than I imagined. Um, I mean, I picked up my office today uh, I was thinking maybe I should bring a sleeping bag actually and then I wouldn't have to pay for the hotels but uh, sleep in the office because they're, they're huge offices although our delegation not a nice office but our delegation would be put in the garden shed you know the, the sort of fourth building on the left um, over four, over three bridges <laughs> I think most people would, would be appalled quite frankly that you know the, the scale of the, the cost the scale of the propaganda uh, for the organisation, the scale of the sort of um, uh, persuasion uh, and its subtle um, 
really in a people is, is, is uh, just incomprehensible because most people aren't aware of what's going on. We'll call them out if we see them doing things to create a European super state or impacting negatively on British interests, that when we leave the European Union, uh, we will be a beacon of light to the peoples of Europe because there are lots of people in the European Union who don't want a European super state, who want national uh, sovereignty. You, you have a view on the way the European Union behaves and so on, but actually when well, you come here and see the your own eyes, I think it's just very obvious that the way they sort of look after their own. They're not really looking after the people of Europe. And, uh, you know, that's why the sort of people are rising up now and uh, saying, you know, enough is enough. It is, uh, you know, it is the uh, cronyist, uh, corrupt organisation. I, I think they would immediately realise, if, if they were allowed into to the chamber uh, and with access to the marvellous um, translators, they would realise very, very quickly just how undemocratic and bureaucratic it is here. That um, uh, because we have not agreed that we should sign up with a minimum seven parties, uh, with MPs across the EU from different political parties, uh, they've limited our allocation of spaces on committees. Well, I don't know um, how most Brexit voters think about these things, but I think that is deeply undemocratic. But why on earth, in order to have a voice for the British people within a committee, should I have to sign away my soul to a group of other parties who have different agendas, different policies, and different beliefs in an awful wide range of issues that would, may well affect the British people? especially if we don't leave by the 31st of October, which would be um, a total uh, derogation, der uh, abandonment of our democracy. The power is being ever centralised. And I think that's a great concern, not uh, only to the British people who have uh, thankfully voted for us to leave the EU, but I think it's also a great worry for people in other countries as they see the power go away from their representatives that they do elect democratically and to an institution that really doesn't believe in it at all. So, you see in that video, it seems the Brexit Party MEPs are pointing out massive wastes of money, 200 million just to move some documents. Have these idiots forgot about fax machines that have been around for decades now? What about the internet that's also been around for decades? Why do they physically need to transport them? Two hundred million pound to move some files every month is obscene, or two hundred million euros, sorry, pounds, euros. It makes no difference. But no wonder would they need our thirty-nine billion if that's the sort of thing they're doing. I mean, what else are they wasting money on? Two hundred million on moving documents. They also point out that they have a massive building in Strasbourg that is used for three days at a time and then sits empty for the other twenty-seven or twenty-eight days of the month before being used again and requiring, as I said earlier another £200 million document transportation. I bet the removal company contracted to do that each month is fucking rolling in it. No doubt the company is owned by one of the top EU cronies, relatives or friends or someone along them lines. It's the usual sort of thing you see with these situations, much like the MPs in the UK who were employing their kids and using that staff money we looked at in my live stream the other day. I mean, but there is something else that needs to be discussed. Why do MEPs need butlers? They're there to do a job, not have people wait on them hand and foot. They're not the Queen. They're not royalty. Why does the EU need butlers? They're there to serve the people. You also hear that they have up to 300 Mercedes-Benz limos ready for use by the MEPs. I dread to know how much they cost and how often they replace them, running them, staffing them. It's not going to be cheap paying for a limo driver for them. They're going to be charging premiums, I'm sure. So this is where all the EU money goes then. All of the EU nations put all their tax into this corrupt shithouse to pay these greedy fuck pigs while they roll around Belgium in limousines, claiming expenses for the local hookers they likely use daily and the penicillin shot they're going to need afterwards. It just goes to show that the EU is not about democracy. It's about lining their pockets and taking money from the people of Europe. It makes me happier each day that we're actually leaving. Hopefully the other European nations will follow suit 
and leave this corrupt block. Now let's check out this article. Hopefully it doesn't just say the same shit that they've said, but we'll find out, I suppose. Brexit party MEPs reveal vast bureaucracy of EU superstate after first week on the job. The Brexit MEPs have ripped into the European Union claiming Leave voters in the UK would be stunned by the appalling waste and bureaucracy they have found in Brussels just days into their new roles. Brexit party MEPs arrived in Strasbourg this week as they were officially sworn into their new roles after Nigel Farage's party secured a huge 29 politicians in May's European elections. Yeah, I think they're the biggest party in the EU at the moment. I'm sure they are. Now, just hours into their new roles, the MEPs sparked fury in the European Parliament as they turned their backs on the European anthem, Ode to Joy, played out. Anne Widdicombe stunned MEPs in the European Parliament chambers on Thursday as she delivered a stunning maiden speech, finishing by saying, That's why we're going Grazie, news conclude. out long. We're gayin, we're off. <laughs> now speaking to the express.co.uk, Brexit party MEPs explained their first impressions of the EU as they insisted British leavers would instantly be shocked by the vast bureaucracy and waste. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we would. Anusita Rees-Mogg, sister of Conservative MP for North East Somerset, Jacob Rees-Mogg, said, It feels like a vast bureaucracy. There is no buzz as there is in the House of Commons. Independent mind and people... Oh, she said that in the video. We don't really need to read through that again. We will, we will really point out this bit, though. The power is being ever centralised. I think that is a great concern. Not only to the British people who have thankfully voted to leave the EU, but I think it's a great worry for the people in other countries as they see the power going away from their representatives that they do elect democratically into an institution that does not believe in it at all. And she's right, they don't believe in democracy. They don't care about democracy. John Longworth, chairman of Leave Means Leave and Brexit Party MEP for Yorkshire and the Humber said that now he was in the bowels of the organisation, the European Union was even more startling than I imagined. He said the whole place is full of a sort of butlers for the MEPs. It's very smoothly operated, of course, because the European Union wants to attract member states to support the entire face of this increasing dictatorship. Well, yeah, that's right. The butler service they have, with booking service, first class and all the rest of it, the classic gravy train, the limo service, that's disgraceful. Why, I just don't understand any of that. Why, first class what? Booking services for what? They don't need none of this. They should go down the calf like everyone else does on their, on their job and go and get their own dinner, pay for their own dinner. Hey, look, the Brexit Party MEP referenced Irish Sinn Féin MEP Matt Carthy standing up in the chamber warning the European Parliament's credibility would be damaged if they didn't stand up for the voters of Catalonia. It comes after the ex-Catalan president, I'm not going to butcher his name, and his colleague were barred from taking their seats because they had fled to Brussels after a banned referendum on independence went ahead and had not attended a swearing-in ceremony in Madrid as required. So there we have it then. I'm not going to continue reading the article. It's all pretty much what we've already gone over either in the video or what I've said myself. It seems though it only takes a couple of days to spot the blatant waste and undemocratic bureaucracy that makes up this EU super state. It just hardens my stance and everyone else's stance that we should never give the EU another fucking penny. 200 million a month for moving documents? You ain't having my 39 billion mate. The EU can go fuck itself. Now, luckily, we have, already, we have already left the EU and we're just waiting for the finality of it. But we do have the Brexit MEPs there fighting for British rights in the meantime. So, that's one good thing, I suppose. Now, I'm going to end the video there, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Remember to like, subscribe and share this video as it helps the channel a lot. And I'll see you all in the next one.